From the underhanded tactics of some shop clerks to the hidden art of the gamble, today we look at secrets lotteries don't want you to know. Number 8. Unriggable Contest The lottery of each state is very closely monitored by the governing authority that runs it, but also with the assistance of investigators and policing agents on the lottery's behalf. Their security division is dedicated to looking out for cheats, swindlers, and charlatans that think they can alter a ticket or find some other way to scam the contest. Most attempts are futile, as a cursory scan will alert a clerk as to whether or not the customer has a winning ticket. And as crafty as folks can be, it's not going to be easy to forge a winning barcode. But even if they could manage it, the amount of investigation and auditing that goes into verifying a claimant would catch you before you even smell the cash. The system even has a means to make sure winners can't receive the full pay if they have outstanding government debts. So unless you're trying to trade your lottery ticket in as a fast pass to federal prison, it's highly recommended you don't go trying to alter it. Number 7. Crooked Clerks it may seem obvious, but there's a whole lot of money to be made in the various lotteries around the country. Not only as a player, but as a seller, as well as with lottery ticket selling convenience stores attributing them with 30 to 40 percent of their revenue. But if that wasn't enough, many store clerks have another means for making a quick buck on your ticket. Typically reliant on a scanned verification as performed by clerks, many customers rely on what they hear from the other side of the counter to tell whether or not they've won. As such, it can often take one little lie by way of denial to send that customer packing and make the store clerk an extra thousand dollars richer. This is a very common issue and has led to lotteries employing their own law enforcement to prevent fraudulent behavior like this in the contest. In some states, these authorities even launch sting operations in attempts of taking down corruption at the convenience stores. Some reports tell of clerks that have been caught receiving sentences of up to two years of probation and losing either their store's ability to sell lottery tickets in the case of store-owning clerks or, more likely, simply their job. To avoid this, officials recommend always signing the back of your tickets so the original owner is always known. Lotteries are doing their part as well. With the advent of scanning devices customers can use to verify tickets on their own. Hopefully, combined with the undercover operations of the past couple decades, this lotto issue will be a thing of the past. Number 6. Best Bets as the popularity of lotteries have grown across the world, so too has the number of different types. The cost of playing the lottery can range from $1 to $30 per scratch or game, but usually only has one set price for draw games. While those looking to gamble often might be quick to think the $1 choice as the safe pick, experts say different. The classic recommendation from lottery purists is to go with the higher price tickets to ensure a higher rate of return. For example, one $30 ticket out of New York with the catchy name Win a Million a Year for Life had an average expected payout of 88 cents per dollar spent. But that just means an average loss of about $3.60 per ticket purchase. Whereas another scratcher in New York called Instant Take 5 showed to have a similar payout at 84 cents per dollar except this ticket only cost $1 to buy, making for a loss of only 16 cents a ticket. Another way to look at what tickets are best to play is the estimated odds of each ticket rather than the average payout. In California, the $1 scratcher, $25 frenzy, has overall odds of 1 in 4.81 of rewarding a prize, and the chance of getting a cash prize are even slimmer, at 1 in 8.94. Meanwhile, the game Bonus Play Millions costs $30 a ticket but yields an overall chance of winning at 1 in 2.48 and the odds of winning cash at 1 in 2.97. While continuously buying $30 tickets might cost more in the short term than an equal amount of $1 scratchers, all signs seem to point high when looking to net big in the lotto. Number 5. Tips and Tricks While mostly considered a gamble, some people seem to be luckier than others in playing the lottery. But in the case of seven-time jackpot winner Richard Lustig, luck wasn't even a factor, or so he contends. Adhering to guidelines of his own devising, Lustig won over $1 million from the lottery and went on to author a book called Learn How to Increase Your Chances of Winning the Lottery, in which he advocates this self-enforced rule set. Among these guidelines, he has listed tips such as never use birthdays, as limiting oneself to numbers ranging from 1 to 31 can damage your chances, or to avoid quick picks, a number randomizer. Instead, he says lottery players ought to choose their own numbers and stick to them, believing the chances of them succeeding rises with each subsequent bet. 
This is all advised as a means to increase odds and remove as much luck from the equation as possible. On the surface, many of these recommendations seem to make obvious sense. However, when held up to the scrutiny of statisticians, much of this advice falls flat. With the lottery being a random game of chance, the concept that each winning combination is removed as possibility or becomes any less likely after each drawing is a farce. Random numbers have an equal amount of chance as any lucky combinations you have in mind. So whether you're sticking to or avoiding birthdays, you're just as likely to win with either superstitious choice as you are with using quick picks. But this isn't to say you can't take some luck out of the equation. Drawing games more or less require zero skill. But scratcher lottery games give a lot more information to work with. Knowing the odds of winning, average return on investment, and even the time in which new tickets are issued can help eliminate any outlying variables that would hinder your winning. Only a select number of winning scratchers are sold per contest. It's often likely that if you purchase one for a game that has been running for a while, then most of the top prizes may already be claimed. These tricks might not get you seven winning jackpots, but they'll at least help minimize poor gambles. Number four, many win, then lose. The idea of winning the lottery evokes two distinct but recurring images. On the one hand, there's the daydream of living lavish and finally attaining success. On the other, the nightmare of losing your new fortune to the curse of overzealous expenditures. Not wholly separate, the truth to success lies somewhere in avoiding both and focusing on responsible spending first and foremost. Over the years, a good number of jackpot winners could only make the prize money last a short time before going broke. Part of this has to do with individual choice and living irresponsibly with their new money. But that kind of wisdom doesn't come in a lottery winner's instruction manual. The truth is that a large portion of people who play the lottery regularly are poor, or at least living without access to excess funds. More often than not, winners lack the experience to know how to properly stretch their prize money, or even the cost associated with high-end purchases. Suddenly, the car that took a fifth of your winnings has an insurance cost exceeding your old monthly salary. Or maybe the show horse you purchased eats more than your family combined. Harebrained purchases like this can quickly ruin what would otherwise be a life-changing win in your life. So if you do win the lottery, remember what so many others seem to forget and save it. Number three, buried treasure. With so many dedicated to playing the odds, it's almost unthinkable that jackpots worth millions would go unclaimed. But over the past 15 years, on five separate occasions, winning Powerball and Mega Millions tickets went unclaimed. Some of these jackpots included prizes up to $77 million. The large pots aren't the only ones that go unclaimed, as players often fail to realize they've won secondary prizes, sometimes worth $1 and other times up to a $1 million. As a result, dumpster diving for lotto tickets has become a common practice. Some people have even found million-dollar prizes rooting through the town's trash. One 83-year-old man named Edward St. John found a winning ticket, but his ownership was disputed by the purchaser who put a claim on the ticket. Eventually, the incident went to court as St. John settled out of court for a sweet payday of $140,000. Another anecdote tells of a man named Ed Rader who turned in his newly discovered winning ticket with no interference. But once he got the payout, he used the money to settle debts before spending a large portion of the remaining prize on more lottery tickets. Number two, poverty powered. The lottery has been described as a means to fund the state by way of a game. It's framed as if the money being spent will only go to better the infrastructure and thus benefit citizens. And yet, evidence has shown it often only exacerbates poverty in the regions that allow it. For example, states with an active lottery generated $70 billion on lotto ticket sales alone. One of those states, North Carolina, showed that 18 out of their 20 counties with a poverty rate of higher than 20% had spent more than the statewide average of $200 a year per person. A survey in California in the late 80s found 75% of the players making less than $30,000 a year would play the lottery in hopes of escaping their financial situation rather than for fun. Meanwhile, as salaries went up for those taking the survey, so did the preference of playing for kicks. To further prove this point, one only needs to look at the correlation between lotto sales and unemployment rates. In 2008, at one of the lowest points of the recession. More than half of the 42 states offering lotteries at the time had record sales years. At the end of the day, it's those with the least to lose that seem to be funding these government-approved gambling operations. Number one, tax in disguise. In 2009, almost a dozen states made more revenue off the state lottery sales than corporate income taxes, including Rhode Island, where they made double of what corporate taxes brought in. Of course, lottery losers make up a large portion of this amount. 
But even winners end up paying a good chunk of their prize money right back to the government. Depending on your social security status and state of residence, you could be charged between 39 and 60% of your winnings in taxes. At the end of the day, the lottery business in general is just a state tax. The big difference, though, is that given its most popular audiences, it is essentially a tax on the poverty-stricken that creates a vicious cycle of keeping the government fueled and poor people poor.